Today, we are going to be diving into the 80-20 rule. We're gonna discuss what is it, how can you apply it to your running, and what does the research say about its effectiveness? Welcome back, Run Smarter Scholars. Today, we are discussing the 80-20 rule, which is essentially talking about your ratio or distribution of intensity spread throughout the week. So the rule will dictate that 80% of your entire weekly running should be dedicated to low intensity. That leaves 20% for you to push into harder efforts. You can use and measure intensity in different ways. You can do heart rate zones, you can do power zones, but for this video, we're going to use RPE which is your rate of perceived exertion. So your internal perception of how hard you are working. With that said, let's dive into the tally of RPE from one to 10. Working our way up, a one to two is exercise that just doesn't have any exertion. It's a little bit more than complete rest. So if you are sitting or if you're sleeping, that's a one to zero, anything above that, once we get above a two, that's when we're starting to jog or starting to exert ourselves a little bit more, but feels like you can maintain it for hours. Keep in mind this intensity, this really light intensity um, of three to four. Keep in mind those characteristics because that's really important for this 80-20 distribution. A five is when we start to push ourselves a little bit more. We start to build a little bit of fatigue and it's going to be hard to maintain that for beyond 60 minutes. A six to seven becomes more challenging. It is borderline uncomfortable. Keeping these characteristics in mind, we then pile on the 80-20 distribution and see exactly what that looks like. So essentially, anything below a five out of 10 in terms of intensity will be 80% of your training and leaves 20% to push into harder efforts, which this distribution would be north of a five out of 10 in terms of perceived intensity. Now, the next question you're probably thinking is why is the 80-20 distribution so important? Why this particular ratio? Well, I interviewed Matt Fitzgerald on the Run Smarter podcast, who is the author of 80-20 Running, and here is his explanation. In the last you know, 15 to 20 years, there's been uh you know, an emerging consensus that the proper boundary between low and moderate intensity aligns with the first ventilatory threshold. It falls between 77 and 81% of maximum heart rate for the, you know, the typical. You would know experientially that that is like, it's not that hard. In terms of RPE on a one to 10 scale of like perceived exertion, that threshold aligns perfectly with a four and it's critical because if you're just above it, then it's much more stressful to your autonomic nervous system and it takes longer to recover. And if you're just below it, you recover much more quickly. It's much less stressful to your autonomic nervous system. If you're above that threshold when you intend to be at low intensity just one time, no big deal. But if you do that habitually, which most recreational endurance athletes do, then it creates this like chronic burden of unresolved fatigue now, what Matt is discussing here is really important because we're talking about the accumulation of fatigue. So when you go for your easy runs, you should be feeling fresh. You should even finish the run feeling fresh, feeling like you're ready to go and could do it all over again. But you stop, your body recovers, and then that leaves on the days when you need to do some harder efforts that you're able to execute on that. And so this 80-20 distribution allows a couple of things. One, it allows the body to recover quicker. Two, it allows the ability to increase your running mileage in the safest way possible. You build up your running mileage, but you do it with really easy kilometers. It's really easy to build that up safely. And three, it just gives you fresher legs for your faster efforts. So when it comes to a day when you have to do high intensity or time trial events or a race, you can then back that up with really fresh legs and can perform even better. So in other words, this particular rule of intensity distribution helps correct the balance between adaptation and recovery. Well, if you're familiar with this channel, if you've watched other episodes before, you know I love to dive into the science. So I found a paper that looks at the performance among elite athletes, this Casado paper, and what they did was took 85 elite male runners specializing in either the 5K, the 10K, half marathon or marathon, and 
The authors just followed them for several years, but paid particular attention to their 10 week preparation leading up to their goal race. So what their training was like 10 weeks before a race and they broke up their training into five different categories, easy running, tempo running, long intervals, short intervals, and then competition and time trials. And they considered in this paper, the last four components of this as deliberate practice and the easy running being not deliberate practice. So after compiling all the data, they discovered that the total training volume had the strongest correlation with performance on their goal race. In other words, irrelevant of the quality of training, the higher volume predicts performance outcomes. And this paper quoted, the non-deliberate practice activity of easy running was crucial in better performances, partly because of its contribution to the total distance run. So we do need to keep in mind that this is just one study. But I did manage to find another systematic review. It was by Mark Keneally and colleagues, and they looked at 16 papers, all looking at different training zones or different training methods and seeing which one was more superior. Before we dive into those three training methods, we need to look at training zones. So if you can see from this, this photo here, we have zone one is training within an RPE of one to four. Zone two, training in an RPE of five to six, and zone three, training in seven to 10 RPE. Keep this in mind because then we allocate these zones to different training efforts or different training philosophies. And so you have the pyramidal approach, which is your stock standard 80-20 intensity distribution, 80% in zone one, while leaving 20% to zones two and three. The difference from a pyramidal and a polarized training approach is you're then going to two extremes. So 80% is spent in zone one, 20% in zone three, and not really leaving much training in zone two. The threshold approach is trying to skewer this ratio, trying to manipulate the ratio to see if it has more benefits. And essentially you're training more than 20% in harder efforts and training less than 80% in those low intensity efforts. And so compiling all this data in this systematic review, they concluded that current evidence describes pyramidal and polarized training was more effective than threshold training. And this paper shows yet again that the theory stacks up when it comes to practical implementation. So a few takeaways from today's video. Number one, if you want to increase your running performance, dedicate time to building up a big base of slow mileage. Number two, dedicate your easy runs to easy intensity. It's easy to start off with the intention of it being a slow, easy run, and then picking up the pace if it feels too easy or picking up the pace at the end. Just make sure that every training session has a purpose. And sometimes that purpose is to stay slow and run with really easy, fresh legs. Number three is to not compare your pace to others. Use your own internal perceived rate of effort. So use your RPE instead of trying to select a pace, especially when that pace is allocated by friends and other runners. Just make sure you're not falling into that particular trap. Number four is if you're injured or tired, you may need to personally adjust these particular values or the, the intensity ratio. And this is because that 80-20 is quite generic and people respond differently to different ratios and different training intensities. So always start at 80-20 as a baseline ratio, and then you can make slight adjustments from there based on your personal preferences, what you find enjoyable and how your body is responding. And just lastly, I wanna share one more thing. It was a podcast episode that I did with my sister Zoe. We titled it, Are You Really Running Slow Enough? And I'm sharing this because I have never received more positive feedback than any other podcast episode than this one. And it was Zoe talking about her transformation, trying to run, trying to increase her mileage and train for races and really just not enjoying it. And turns out she wasn't running slow enough. And when she finally discovered it, her legs were fresher, her performance was increasing and she found her love for running again because it became more enjoyable. So I'll leave that link in the description below. And while you're checking out that description, if you've liked or learned anything, hit the like button. If you haven't yet already, hit subscribe and I'll be happy to answer any question that you leave in that comment section.